Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the slip of induction motor. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive, link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic, slip of induction motor. Now we will see the speed of the stator. It is nothing but a speed of rotating magnetic field or synchronous speed equal to ns. This ns is nothing but synchronous speed. The motor designed at the time of designing the speed is the ns. Also it is called a speed of the stator or speed of the rotating magnetic field. But the actual speed of the motor or rotor, speed of the rotor is n. The difference between these two n and ns is nothing but a slip of the induction motor. So the slip is measure of difference between the synchronous speed and its shaft speed. The difference between these two is nothing but a, a slip of induction motor. So based on that we can calculate the slip speed. Ns minus n is nothing but a sp slip speed. The speed slipped is nothing but difference between synchronous speed and the speed of the rotor. So that is the difference between the speed of the rotating magnetic field and that of rotor is called a slip speed. Now we will see the definition of the definition of the slip. The slip is also called as a absolute slip or fractional slip. The another name is absolute slip or fractional slip. So that is the difference between the synchronous speed and actual speed of the rotor ns and n expressed as a fraction of synchronous speed is called a slip of the motor that is ns minus n divided by ns right the difference between synchronous speed and speed of the rotor expressed in terms of synchronous speed ns is nothing but a slip of the induction motor while taking percentage of slip ns minus n divided by ns into 100 we need to multiply with 100 now we will see the speed of the motor in terms of the slip the speed expressed in terms of slip. The, we know that S equal to Ns minus N divided by Ns. So cross multiply this. So S into Ns equal to Ns minus N. Right? Bring this N in the left hand side, S Ns in the right hand side. So while coming this side, this minus N become plus N. This S into Ns become minus S into Ns. The Ns available commonly take Ns outside so that n equal to ns into 1 minus s. So the speed of the motor in terms of synchronous speed and slip is n equal to ns into 1 minus s. Now we will see the slip at the various stages starting and running condition. Slip at the starting condition. We will see the what is the slip at the starting condition. So at the time of start the speed of the motor is 0. So at the beginning it is as there is no speed so n equal to 0. The definition of slip is S equal to Ns minus N divided by Ns. Now the N is 0, N is 0, so it becomes Ns by N, so that is equal to 1. So S equal to 1. So at the beginning, at the starting condition, the slip of the induction motor is 1. So this is the maximum value of the slip and that is occurred at the starting condition. So this S equal to 1 is the maximum value that will occur in the starting condition. When S equal to 0, what will happen? When S equal to 0, Ns equal to N. Because we know the formula N equal to Ns into 1 minus S. If S, S equal to 0 means 1 minus 0 is 1. So, N equal to Ns. Synchronous speed and speed of the rotor both are equal. But, Ns, Ns equal to N is not possible for induction motor. So that slip of the motor cannot be zero at any case, right? So, so this Ns minus N is not possible. If uh, synchronous speed and rotor speed is uh, equal, then so do, the rotor will be locked. The rotor will be rotor will not rotate, right? So the slip cannot be a zero value, right? So at the any case, the slip is not zero. So it is greater than zero, and also it is maximum of S equal to one. The minimum value is greater than zero maximum value is 1. Now we will see the effect of the slip on the rotor parameters, various rotor parameters what will happen due to the slip. Let us study the effect of slip on the following rotor parameters. We are going to study the 5 parameters. 
due to the slip what is the effect of the slip on rotor frequency magnitude of rotor induced emf rotor reactance power factor rotor power factor and rotor current we are going to analyze the effect of the slip based on this this five parameters of the rotor first we will see the slip of the frequency the effect of slip of on frequency of the rotor current so when the rotor is stationary the frequency of the rotor current equal to supply frequency both are equal at the stationary condition the supply frequency and rotor current frequency are equal when rotor is rotating the frequency of the rotor current will depends upon the slip of the speed slip speed so when the motor rotates the speed decreases so the frequency of the rotor current depends upon the slip speed that is called as fr we will take fr f is the supply frequency fr is the frequency of the rotor under running condition frequency of rotor current at running condition now we will analyze this so we know that the synchronous speed n is equal to 120 f by p standard formula is available right so n is minus n the difference between the synchronous speed and rotor speed equal to 120 fr by f fr by p the rotor this is the frequency of the supply this is the frequency of the rotor current so at that time there is a difference in the speed n s minus n difference between n s the synchronous speed and normal speed now from these two equation we will we'll go for this this take this is equation 1 and equation 2 we will go for equation 2 divided by equation 1 n s minus n divided by n s right so the n s minus n is 120 f r by p this n s is nothing but 120 f by p right this is rotor current frequency this supply frequency 120 got cancelled this p also got cancelled so what we got n s minus n divided by n s equal to f r divided by f rotor current frequency divided by supply frequency so we know that n s minus n by n s is nothing but a slip slip of the induction motor yes right so that s equal to f r into f right bring this f in this di in this side so that f r equal to s into f so the frequency of the rotor rotor current is nothing but slip into supply frequency so right? so during the starting condition both are equal supply frequency and rotor frequency is equal during running condition it is depends upon the slip of the induction motor so that f r equal to s into f frequency of rotor current f r equal to s into f now we will see the induced emf effect of slip on rotor induced emf again we will start with the stationary when the rotor is stationary s equal to 1 so at stationary condition relative speed is maximum emf induced is is maximum and the proportional synchronous speed is also proportional to ns e2 is directly proportional to ns e2 is nothing but emf induced in the rotor when it is stationary right so during stationary condition s equal to 1 speed is maximum induced emf also maximum that is depends upon the synchronous speed e2 is directly proportional to n2 right e2 is nothing but emf induced in the rotor during the stationary condition so at the running condition what will happen as rotor start rotating relative speed between the rotating magnetic field and rotor decreases and hence emf also decreases and it is proportional to the relative speed n s minus n so at the beginning it is both are equal so it is proportional to n s when it is start rotating there is a difference between the relative speed and speed of the rotor so the induced emf is depends upon n s minus n so that e 2 r is directly proportional to n s minus n e2 means rotor emf induced in the rotor under starting condition e2 r refers emf induced in the rotor under the running condition that is depends upon difference in the speed right so that is given rotor induced emf at the running condition right now we'll go for the ratio e2 r divided by e2 e2 r is yes ns minus n e2 is ns we are going to divide the two two equation about two equations right so this ns minus n by ns is nothing but a slip of the induction motor yes 
we know that so that e to r divided by e to equal to s so cross multiply this so e to r equal to s into e2 so the rotor induced emf under running condition is depends upon the slip of the induction motor right thus during starting condition both are equal e to r is directly proportional to n2 now it is depends upon the slip of the induction motor now we will see the effect of slip on rotor resistance and reactance r and x so the rotor winding has its own value of resistance and reactance now again we will start with the starting condition at the starting condition standstill condition n equal to 0 we will take this r2 is rotor resistance per phase x2 is the rotor reactance per phase right so at the standstill fr equal to f both are equal supply frequency and rotor current frequency both are equal right so if l2 is the impedance of the rotor so we can write x2 equal to 2 pi f into l2 ohm per phase the general formula reactance reactance x x equal to 2 pi f l so in that we are taking l2 is the impedance of the rotor right l1 refers stator l2 refers the rotor right so under starting condition n is 0 so the reactance is x2 equal to 2 pi f l2 this r2 as it is we can take as it is now we will go for a running condition so under the running condition fr equal to s into f that we already discussed the frequency of the rotor under running condition is slip into f so x to r equal to 2 pi fr into l2 so this is x2 is the reactance under standstill condition x to r means under running condition so that is f 2 pi this f also now replaced by fr under running condition into l2 but this fr is nothing but s into f so 2 pi f fr is replaced by s into f l2 so that is nothing but s into 2 pi f l2 this 2 pi f l2 is nothing but the x2 so s into x2 so the reactance of the rotor under running condition is depends upon the slip of the induction motor s into x2 right so this x2 r is the rotor reactance at running condition rotor reactance is same at standstill and and at running condition the resistance value is same is it is not depends upon the slip resistance value is is same for both standstill as well as running condition now we will go to the impedance so the rotor impedance at standstill is very simple z2 equal to r2 plus jx2 resistance and reactance so while taking magnitude it is square root of r2 square plus x2 square under the running under the standstill condition but in case of running condition z2 r z2 refers starting and condition z2 r means under running condition so that r2 plus j x2 r r2 is same for standstill as well as running condition but the impedance but the reactance will be x2 r it become x2 r this is a starting condition this is running condition so while taking magnitude it is square root of r2 square plus x2 r square x2 r is nothing but s into x2 just now we discussed so replace this x2 r by s x2 so this is the impedance under the running condition so this depends upon the slip of the induction motor now we will see the rotor current effect of slip on the rotor current let us take I2 is the rotor current per phase at standstill. I1 refers the stator current. I2 means is a rotor current. E2 EMF per phase at standstill. Z2 impedance per phase at standstill. Right? We already discussed E2 and Z2. Right? So that we will go for I2. I2 is E2 divided by Z2. So that E2 divided by square root of R2 square into plus X2 square. Right? This is for under the standstill condition some of same thing will go for a running condition i2 r i2 means starting condition i2 r refers rotor current per phase at running condition similarly e2 r is nothing but s into e2 that already we discussed right so the em of per phase at running condition so that z2 r equal to r2 square plus s into x2 previously we have only x2 
now it is s into x2 right so these two things are we already discussed the details about r i2 and e2 now we got the impedance from that we can easily calculate the rotor current i2 r equal to e2 r divided by z2 r right so the e2 r is s into e2 z2 r is now just now we calculated square root of r2 square plus x into x to the whole square so this rotor current under, under the running condition is depends upon slip of the induction motor now we'll go to the power factor effect on slip uh, effect of slip on the power factor now consider this uh, impedance triangle the angle pi 2 is there there the resistance is a reference in this with the 90 degree we have the reactance the vector sum of these two is the impedance so general impedance diagram resistance reactance and impedance so at the standstill condition this cos pi 2 this cos pi is nothing but a power factor so cos pi 2 means this is opposite side this is adjacent side this hypotenuse so the cos mean adjacent side by hypotenuse r2 divided by z2 right the general formula available r2 divided by z2 right so r2 divided by z2 is nothing but r2 square plus x2 square general formula under standstill condition the same thing under the running condition mean we need to add the slip of the induction motor same formula only r2 divided by z2 r this r refers the running condition the resistor value is same for both running condition as well as starting condition right so z2 r is nothing but r2 square plus s into x2 square right so this is a formula for power factor under standstill condition this is for under running condition during running condition it is depends upon the slip of the induction motor so in this video we discuss about the slip slip of the induction motor definition and the formula and the effect of the slip on rotor parameters five parameters we discuss subscribe the channel for more videos and notification soft copy of this material available in the drive link is given in the description box thank you for listening